as I already told you, you have two types of macrocytosis. Whenever you call macrocytosis, you have two different types of macrocytosis. One is called a megaloblastic macrocytosis and second one you have something called a non-megaloblastic macrocytosis. If you want to know the differences between a megaloblastic and a non-megaloblastic macrocytosis, it's actually quite simple. So here you're going to have something called an impact DNA synthesis. So your DNA synthesis will be impact. So that is the basic idea of a megaloblastic macrocytosis, impact DNA synthesis. So because of the impact DNA synthesis, there will be something called a delayed nuclear maturation. There will be a delayed nuclear maturation. So because of the delayed nuclear maturation, you will have a very high NC ratio in this patients, which means the nucleus will remain persistently bigger. I told you in many of the lineage, especially in the erythrocyte lineage, the nucleus becomes progressively smaller and smaller in size and the same in the WBC lineage also, the nucleus becomes progressively smaller and smaller in size and becomes very small. In erythroid, it is completely expelled but in myeloid, it becomes smaller and smaller in size over time. But here, because of the delayed maturation and because of the poor DNA synthesis also, your maturation will not happen because of the same reason the nucleus will not become smaller in size and the nucleus will remain bigger and that is the reason why your nuclear cytoplasmic ratio is increased in this patients whereas in non-megaloblastic macrocytosis there is no impairment of DNA synthesis there is absolutely no impairment of DNA synthesis but why do you get macrocytosis in a non-megaloblastic causes we don't know. We don't know. Really, we don't know what is the real reason why you get macrocytosis in non-megaloblastic causes. But there are some theories are there, like you have something called excessive membrane lipids, probably due to redundant membrane, excessive membrane lipids. That could be the reason for why you get a non-megaloblastic macrocytosis. The classic examples of what you will get in a megaloblastic macrocytosis is vitamin B12, and folate deficiencies. So deficiency of vitamin B12 and folate are classic examples of megaloblastic macrocytosis even though you have a lot of other causes like myelodysplastic syndromes and all but traditionally this B12 and folate deficiency are classic examples. Then if you ask me what are the classic examples of non-megaloblastic macrocytosis I have discussed in detail in the basics of anemia section but at the same time most common cause if they ask you answer must be alcohol. Alcohol is the most common reason or you get a non-megaloblastic macrocytosis. But one more difference if you want to know, in a megaloblastic macrocytosis, the MCV, if you don't treat them, the MCV can exceed even 120 femtoliters in adults. But it never exceeds 120, the non-megaloblastic macrocytosis, never going to exceed 120, which means it will be usually approximately in the range of 100 to 110 femtoliters and nothing more than that. So it will not exceed 120. But in a megaloblastic macrocytosis, your MCV can exceed 120 femtoliters as well.